I've wanted to make a large Lego Jabba for quite some time, but I've always found it a little bit beyond me to design something that looks good at a large size, and so I've just never really done it. But recently I found this set of instructions on Rubricable, which is a site that sells instructions for custom uh, Lego designs that people have created. And in this case, uh, it cost $9 to get the instructions and it comes with a list of all the LEGO parts that you're going to need to make that design. You can download the parts list in CSV format if you want, but they also have this button on the site that will allow you to automatically just import all of those parts to your BrickLink wanted list. So that's what I did. And basically you just have to type in a name for the list, add the parts, and if you go to the BrickLink site, you'll find that they're right there in a new wanted list. As I've explained in the past, BrickLink will allow you to easily uh, search for all of these parts that you need in the inventories of lots of different LEGO shops and then just buy them. Uh, in my case, it took three different shops to find all of the parts. Since you have to pay shipping from each shop, you obviously want to use as few shops as possible. In my case, it came to just under $130, including shipping for all of the parts. So here we have all of the parts that have arrived from the BrickLink sellers. They're just kind of randomly assorted into different bags at this point. I'm not really sure what the logic is behind that. Probably just something that the individual sellers use some system. But uh, yeah, I hope I got everything that I need. Some of these are in uh, reused Lego bags like that. Anyway, I'm gonna try putting these together. Uh, I'm gonna be using the PDF instructions on my iPad, just to, uh, you know, follow, follow along. These are 326 pages long, so they're the kind of instructions probably that, you know, are automatically generated and may not be always the easiest to follow, but uh, I'll do my best and see how everything goes. For the assembly, I just kind of dumped out all the bags and tried to group them generally by color and didn't really go much beyond that. Usually I find that's good enough and will allow me to find the pieces that I need relatively quickly. There's quite a few pieces here. It's supposed to be 953. I'm going to go ahead and do a short time lapse for you. Nothing uh, too involved. I just sort of snapped a picture every time I finished a page of the instructions. So hopefully that will be interesting to watch. Here we have the finished figure, and the build went relatively well. I think it wasn't too terribly difficult, although it's one of these where you kind of have to uh, put a bunch of bricks out, like on the table, and then build on top of those loose bricks. But I don't really like that so much, but maybe it's uh, unavoidable with this style. This is the uh, studs not on top style, I guess you call it, where you have the Lego studs facing you instead of using them using the bricks as bricks and building them, you know, on top of each other. You have some that are just sort of facing outward. Uh, it's a really cool look. I think I've never been able to sort of get my head around how to design something that uses this approach. So I'm glad that I can, uh, you know, have something like this uh, in my collection, even if I didn't design it. Uh, I really like how this came out overall. It's a nice size, big, he's uh, chunky chunky boy. And uh, I think they really did a good job in 
uh, doing the face in particular. Let's take a closer look at that. So we've got this big wide open mouth, uh, a chin, this red tongue sticking out I think is great, nostrils and a nose and eyes and eyelids. Uh, these eyes, by the way, I originally thought they were like an Eye of Sauron stud or something from uh, Lord of the Rings set, but no, they're actually used in a couple of Marvel sets and maybe something else as just a monster's eye. It's not a very widely used piece, but uh, I think it's perfect for this set. They, in the instructions, showed the pupils going horizontally, but actually Jabba's eyes should have the pupils going vertically, so I just spun them around and corrected that. If we look at his arms, you can see that they're out of focus. If we look at his arms, you can see that they are articulated so they can move up and down, or sort of swivel anyway, and also move at the elbow. He's got a little uh, clip here to use as a thumb, allowing him to grab something. And of course we're making use of that with the hookah pipe. He's holding on to the end of that. The pipe itself, up to the gold parts here, are in the instructions. But I found that uh, this hose is much too strong to allow this to actually sit up. You can see it just wants to go straight all the time. So I had to make some kind of a base that would allow the hookah pipe to stand up. And in fact, I had to not only make a base, but sort of partially attach it to Jabba's body here, just, you know, for display purposes. Maybe in the future I can make a whole throne railing or something. Let me get this back on here. Oh, it's come off. Let's see here. I wrestled with this for quite a while before I figured out the best way to approach it. There we go. And we also have Salacious Crumb over here. This was quite an interesting approach to this. Uh, making a brick-built Salacious Crumb in this scale is not easy, and they've done some pretty creative work to make that possible. It's a little weird looking, if I'm honest. But it does look more or less like Crumb. They've used, like, uh, binoculars for his eyes, and these are his ears, and the tail, and so forth. I mean, you know, I gotta give him credit for being creative there. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this build went. If you're interested in giving it a try, I will put a link in the video description to the Rebrickable instructions. And do let me know if you've seen similar instructions available elsewhere for um, a large Lego Jabba or maybe some related characters, I'd be interested in trying those out as well. Thanks for watching. As usual, this video is brought to you with the help of the support of my patrons from Patreon, including these Palace VIPs and especially Angelica Brady. Thank you all very much for your support. If you'd like to see how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month, check out the link in the video description.